Good morning. Just finishing up some little prep here before we get started. We'll wait for some people to show up. Get a few of you here. We are back for Sew Together Tuesday. All right, my little, uh, yeah, cuddle filled lint roller here. I'll do another one because my ironing board is messy. So I'm going to clean that up before we use it today. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. We are back for Sew Together Tuesday and I say we because Hawk is here! Yay! Hi everybody, I'm back. <laughs> We're so happy he made it back. He rolled in yesterday afternoon and um, got some fuzz in the air now. Um, he came back yesterday afternoon and is back and he solved the problem with the microphones. Um, we think. How's everybody doing? Can you hear us? Yeah, can you yes. hear us okay? Okay, good. Um, yeah, so it was um, sort of my fault, I think, but it, you know, it kerfuffled him for a second too, so I feel better about that. Um, anyway, but we're back, it's working, and um, we're good to go, I think. So um, today, welcome to September. I can't believe it's September already. How did that happen? September is kind of back to school month, and so this month we're um, kind of doing a back to basics is what we're going to do with the Sew Together Tuesday. So we're going to have some really, um, just some sort of basic information as well as a couple of really simple projects. Um, so today we're talking about embroidery and applique. Uh, and that's what we'll be talking about, just kind of the basics of it. I'm going to run you through how to put an applique on, and um, that's going to be it. So we're not going to do a project this week. We'll be back next week with a project. Um, we'll talk about that at the end. So don't let me forget, okay, Hawk, um, to talk about the project. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so uh, I wanted to let you know that we are doing a big giveaway this month because it is National Sewing Month. And so we have um, gathered together with all of our vendor partners and we have put together an enormous uh, prize package for you. So it's one big prize package with, I don't even know, Ellen can tell us, like the approximate retail value, it's a lot. I've seen it. There is a, you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, Ellen, but I, there is a blog post about it where you can sign up, and I think you have to sign up for our newsletter, and then you get entered to win into, um, for this prize, and it is kind of an amazing prize. So you can find out more on the blog post about it um, and see all of the different things that are included. But you know, we partner with a lot of people like Schmetz and Odif and uh, Aliso and all sorts of people. So this is gonna be a good one. I'm kind of excited about to see who, see who wins it, because it's a big one. Um, so don't forget to do that. We're also um, going to be doing some lives with fabric.com this month. So you um, can follow us there and we're going to do some other projects. So we're going to have, you know, double duty this month. It'll be really fun. Do a lot of different things. So uh, also we wanted to let you know, please share it. Please share the video from today. You'll be entered to win. So that's the way we're going to do it. Um, I not sure from now on or just today, but um, if you share it, then you'll be entered to win the giveaway at the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you basically a bundle of stuff that you could do some applique with um, and then embroidery on it if you have the embroidery machine. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. So we'll get started. Um, so today we're going to just do a little bit of applique and I'm going to talk about it. So um, one of the things with um, cuddle is that people often think that you can't like that you can't really applique with it you can't embroider with it you can't iron with it and we're going to go through all of that and show you how you actually can so we have a few patterns that are on our um, website that you could check out that have applique so once you realize how well this works we have some free patterns for you to use um, we're also going to talk about using the dyes and embroidery patterns okay so first of all I want to talk about um, <laughs> we're going to show I'm just going to show you a little sample so this is one that's a free pattern. This is our uh, elephant walk pattern. Okay, super cute. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because I really love combining cotton and cuddle. I think it's super fun and um, it creates just a whole other texture. And this is, uh, this is Alexander Henry fabric. This is their weave, I believe. Um, and this is our little pattern. So um, I have, no, I didn't bring one to trace. I might just have to figure that out really fast. Um, to show how you would do this, okay? So basically what we do is we would have, we have the fabric and then we cut it out and I'm just totally gonna do that. And we're gonna walk through both variations of it, of the applique, okay? So I'm gonna show you two different ways, oops, of doing it. Cause I have to iron for both of these. And so that'll be good. Okay. 
So here is my little piece. I'm going to get this guy. Is this guy warming up? Not yet. Okay. I need my ironing board. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. We'll show it at the end, okay? That little Hydra quilt. If you're on the I Love Cuddle group, you probably saw that that's what I was working on, this little guy. And I'll show you that at the end, okay? <laughs> so don't let me forget, because I want to show them that quilt, because people ask, like, oh, do they flip up? Do they move? Yes, they do. I'm going to show you how they do that. Um, okay, so what I have here is I have the Apple Web Plus is what I use. You can also use Soft Fuse, um, there's another brand that has the paperbacks. What you want is a double-sided fusible that is, um, has the paper on it. Because then what happens with the paper is that you can trace any image that you want. So even if I wanted to redo this elephant, you can't really see it because of the light, but I could trace around this, okay? So I can trace around any pictures that I want to do. Okay, I'm going to simply draw a little, I have green. And I'm going to do a tree out of the AccuQuilt. So I'm going to draw a silly little tree. Okay. This is how I draw a tree. It's just a triangle. Guess who's the artist in this, this relationship? Not me. Okay. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to draw a little thing down here and see if I have a brown. Okay. But simple for demonstration. <laughs> simple for demonstration purposes. Okay. So, oops, I don't want to cut it out yet. Got ahead myself. All right, so we got that ironing. What I'm going to do, and whether I'm using the die cutter, because today I'm going to use the AccuQuilt um, Go, the Go Baby, I think is what I have. Yeah, Go Baby. I'm going to use that, and I'm also going to show you how to do it without a die cutter. So either way, you can do it. So the first thing you want to do is put your design on. When you're doing the elephant or anything else, make sure that whatever way you want your design to go, you trace it backwards, okay? Because you're tracing it. When I trace it onto this side of the fabric, this, the fabric goes here, so this is the right side. So it will always be opposite, okay? So in the pattern, the elephant may actually go the other way when you look at the pattern, and then when I put it on there, it goes the, the other way. So this is really important to remember when you're doing letters. So if you're doing letters or numbers, you always wanna do them backwards. Um, Otherwise, they show up like the embroidery did last week <laughs> because of the camera issues and everything was backwards. Um, we're going to avoid that. Okay, so let me see if this is getting warm. Yep, slowly but surely. Um, it's really, it's just fine. Uh, so a lot of people ask if we can iron with the cuddle, and they often think that you can't, that you can't use the fusibles on it. I get asked that a lot with the interfacing or with the applique stuff, and you totally can. So the only thing that I have done differently is I have set it on the medium setting. So whatever your iron has for a polyester setting, that's what you want to use, okay, because you want to use a lower heat. If you're using the higher heat, you have more tendency to mess up the fabric. And we worked really hard to make a quality fabric that isn't going to melt, um, but you will have an issue with it actually um, sort of pushing a design into it. All of our, like the hide and everything like that, they're heat set. So the fabric can actually be sort of manipulated like that. And what I have found is that if I press on the front of it, what it will do is sort of set the marks in it from the iron, or if it's not pressed one direction, it'll sort of add a little swirl in it. And it kind of sets it that way. I think that when you wash it, it comes out, but I just avoid using a high heat or ironing on the front. So those are the two ways that I deal with that, okay? So I've got my iron on. Um, I've got the Aliso iron. It's a lovely little thing. Um, I'm just going to press my Apple Web Plus onto the back of it, okay? Here's my one that I did. So what I wanna do, because my tree has a direction, right? So I'm gonna pet my fabric. I just happen to get lucky. This is my top bottom. Okay, if you want to, you can always mark it with like a T for your top. And we do this in classes sometimes when we're trying to um, remember which way it is. So oftentimes I'll mark it because that way if these separate later, I know easily this is the top and I don't have to spend the time to um, pet it again. Okay, so I'm just going to set this on the back. All right, move this over so you guys can see it and I can reach it. And I'm simply going to press it on here. And I hold it for a few seconds and then I move it and I press it down again. Okay, one of the things that's really important is that when you're doing this, that you're just pressing, which is different than ironing, okay? So pressing is just putting the iron on it and holding it down. And I actually do press down. I'm trying to get that to melt into it, 
okay? I don't want to iron it. Iron it is, ironing is when you're like this and you're pushing it and because Cuddle is a knit fabric, if you do that, it will totally stretch it. And then if you're stretching it and adhering it to something at the same time, you're gonna end up with it distorted, okay? And we don't want that. All right. Okay, so now it's on there. I can see that it's melted because it changes the way that it looks. Okay, and it's stuck on there. So I want it to cool, and then I can actually cut it out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna iron on another piece that I will use for the um, AccuQuilt, okay? So I'm just gonna whack off another hunk. These are my little scrappy bits, because I save all of those. Okay, and this time I don't care which way that the nap is going. Doesn't matter yet because I'm going to care only when I put it into the die cutter. So I'm just going to iron this again or press this again. Okay, so you can see how it looks right now and it'll look a little bit differently as it melts. You sort of see like more of the color kind of comes through. Okay, so the biggest thing, like I said, is not to hold it too long and then also not to iron it, just press it, okay? And I do this from this side, okay? So you can see the other side has just been ironed flat, totally fine, hasn't messed it up at all, okay? The fabric is totally fine, okay? So that's important to remember is that it won't mess up your fabric. Um, just don't hold it there forever and don't press from the front. Um, you can press from the front if you're using a pressing cloth. I've just found that that's the way that I kind of mess with the nap a little bit more and I don't really want to mess with the nap. So if I do it from the back side, I'm not as likely to do that, okay? All right, so we're gonna let that cool. This one I can feel is cool. And the reason you want to let it cool is because the, um, the sticky will then adhere to the actual fabric. If you take it off while it's still warm, that glue is soft and will kind of stick to the paper more than we want it to, okay? So I'm just gonna cut this out and I'm actually, there it is. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter just so I can get a nice straight line, okay? I'm just gonna do a silly little triangle here, okay? And I'm gonna cut my little tree bottom out, but now I know about how big I want it to be. Okay, I'm gonna do a little, a little funkiness to it here. Add a weird bit. So truthfully, I could get you know like four trees out of this, and I just took one. Okay. So I've got that cut out. Which way does my nap go? That direction. Okay, good. All right. So there's my little funky tree. Okay. So I'm gonna take off the little bits of cuddle dust. I want to hang on. Okay. Get those out of the way. All right, now, these are my scraps, so I'm just gonna chuck them. Normally, I would have taken a few, you know, trees out of that and used a little bit more of the fabric, but that's okay. All right, so now, let me see. Oh, I have some brown right here. We're just gonna do it really fast, okay? <laughs> my little sweet strips are gonna have one little chunk out of it. Sorry. Okay, see if I can find the end, just because I need a little bit of brown. Okay, just gonna take it right out of the middle. This is terrible. Don't ever do this, you guys. What a waste of fabric. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take a hunk out. <laughs> right out of the middle. <laughs> I made it so that sweet strip is not 10 inches all the way across anymore. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna iron it on. Let's see which way that goes. Okay, so this one I'm gonna iron on and then I'm gonna draw my little tree trunk. Okay, so this one I got the, the fusible is bigger than my fabric. So I'm just gonna iron this on a little bit. And whoops. And then I'm actually just gonna cut off the extra here so that I don't accidentally fuse it to my board. I'm sure if you have been sewing for any period of time, you have ironed interfacing or something to your board at some time. It's a common, common uh, mistake. A common oops. Okay. All right. And now I'll let that cool. And then I can make a little trunk. Okay. 
So now I got those things. Okay, so so if we're gonna do it with just like cutting out our own pattern, that's how we're gonna do it. We can use that, like I said, like for the elephant or anything else. Um, I love cuddle because it has such like an interesting texture to it. So you can use this for all sorts of things. Um, I did a bunting once and then I did like cotton and then I did cuddle for the applique. Super cute. I have a ton of applique samples that I've made and hardly any of them I have here. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna talk about things that I have made and given away, because that's what I do. All right, so now we're gonna do it with the uh, AccuQuilt, okay? So this um, AccuQuilt does like a live every week, I think, and um, they talk about it and they use our fabric sometimes, which is great. Okay. So this is the little, um, the baby version, so it's the little guy. Okay, so it fits um, in my little bitty studio up here better. Um, I have one of the bigger ones. I have the, well, I have the roll one. I've had that one for 10 years or something. I also have one of the electric ones. So if you um, have wrist issues or strength issues, the electric one actually like pulls it right through for you. Um, and so this one is a hand crank and you really have to like kind of crank it to get it started. But if you, um, like I said, if you want to, the electric one is super nice because you just put it down and it just like bloop, right through and cuts it for you. It's like magic. Um, okay. And we'll talk about more of the dies too. So this one that I'm doing, this is the die that I'm using today. Um, I'm going to do the tree right now. We're going to talk about the snowflake later. Um, this is their holiday medley one, I think it's called. Okay, so I'm going to make it so that my tree nap goes this direction. So when I pet my fabric, my fabric goes this way, so top to bottom. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm flipping it this way, right? Except that what I wanna do is I wanna do it like this. So a lot of times this is what we do and we because we want it to be the opposite, but we're gonna actually do it this way. And the reason I do it, you could do it face down and it's fine. But the reason I do it face up is because when this cuts, it cuts through all of the, like it pushes into it, right? So you can see, if you look on here really close, Hawk, you can see there are little bits. So this, I cut some cuddle in it earlier and you can see some little bits. When you cut cotton, it does the same thing, okay? Totally does it. Oh, so here's some older ones that I did, okay? It's got the cotton still stuck in there. And they give you a little tool, which is downstairs, unfortunately. Um, there's a little, a little um, kind of like a little pick that you can clean that out. I have found that if I put the cuddle onto it and then cut it, it shoves more of the nap into it. So if I do it the other way, and especially if it has the backing on it, it's super easy. It doesn't make such a mess. Okay. Did all that make sense? Okay. So it's going to make them, it's going to get stuck in your, in your dye anyway, whether you're using cotton or cuddle. If you're using cuddle, put it up so you get less stuck in there. Okay. I'm just going to do one. I can do two layers and it's okay. I um, often just do one at a time though because then they can't slide. More than that, and the cuddle starts shifting a bunch, and we don't want that. So we're just gonna stick this in here. I'm actually gonna move my cutter, or my, um, what do they call that part? The little cover part, over here. I'm gonna bring it through, come on. Come on, little guy, you did it earlier. There we go. Yeah, it starts to catch, because there's like little things in here, rubber, that has to catch all of this. And the cuddle is thick, so um, one layer works pretty well. On the electrical one, I could do more. Ta-da, look at that, it just comes right through. It's like magic, okay? Um, I need to remember, <laughs> what the, where did it go? <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> it was like the tree disappeared. <laughs> there it is, it's stuck to that. Okay, so you can see on here, so now look at the die again, okay? So if you look at the die, you can see it didn't really get anything extra stuck in there, okay? There's a little bit, I see a tiny little bit of green fuzz on it, otherwise it's fine, okay? And it's really, a lot of that is because um, the nap goes up and so some of it is stuck on there and I can just easily clean that up, okay? Ta-da! All right, so this, we'll do the same thing and we'll sort of get the extra little bits of cuddle dust off of it, okay? And mostly because if you've watched this at all, you know, we don't want to keep all that on there because we want to keep, get as much cuddle dust off before we get to the sewing machine. Okay. That's really important. So you can see it's in here and I can just clean that off and it's totally fine. Okay. Good to go. Don't worry about it. You'll just vacuum it up later. That's what I do. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we got that taken care of. So let me put it back. 
they have a bunch of dyes uh, that are available that are usable for cotton and some of them um, have embroidery uh, files with them we'll talk about that in a little bit but i just want to show you a few of the dyes i have quite a few of them because i like khaki quilt dyes um, but all of these are very useful with cuddle as well as cotton okay so they have a cute little elephant they have little bear and duck and these are just some like honestly they have a ton of them um, the little flowers are super cute and I've done those a few times um, where you could put them so these are like the little middle bits that you can put on there you can stack these super fun the little elephant or the elephant the airplane that's what this is is an airplane um, we showed on the blog if you look on that there is a picture of a cute little pillow that was done with this and um, it turned out really cute and they used the uh, rose cuddle for the clouds which is adorable um, and then the little plane is all of it's still all cuddle and it's on an embossed. Anyway, it's super cute. The picture is on our blog. You can check it out. Um, I used to have the pillow and I don't have it anymore. Rin says don't throw away the scraps because you can use it for reverse applique. Oh, so I might dig through my trash. Thanks, Rin. Um, <laughs> I'll give that a try. Um, this, is, this is a super cute one. This one actually they have, um, you can make a whole bunch of different things with it. So you can make like the owl, but it also makes like a cow and a squirrel and I can't even remember a whole bunch of things with these pieces um, I did that once and then they have this guy and I use this for um, the part that we're going to talk about next okay so dyes are super good they're super useful and um, they work just as well like I said for cuddle as they do for cotton you just can't do as many and that's okay all right so let me stick those back we'll get things sort of in order okay all right, there we go. Okay, die is taken care of. I'll hide that back there. All right, you remember what that was then. Okay, mm -hmm. so I got my trees. I got my tree. Now I can cut out my... So this one has um, the trunk is just part of the tree. Okay, but this one I'm going to figure out which way my nap went again. I'm going to figure out which way my nap goes here. Okay, so this is my top to bottom on this. So I'm just gonna whack out a little trunk here. Is that cute? Do I look like a kindergart kindergartner making art? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, all right, you know what I think I did? I think I didn't bring a pressing cloth up here. I'm trying to figure out if I have a piece of cotton anywhere. I don't know that I do. Oh, I have that piece of cotton. <laughs> I'll use the corner of that as my pressing cloth. Okay. <laughs> That's what Hawk is here for because he sees more than I do. I'm like, I'm right to the here. This is what I see. <laughs> All right. So I've got my little, my little bits here are my different trees. Okay. So the way that we put this together with applique, um, so when I first started doing it, I would just like stick it on there, try to press it on, and then sew it. And I found that there are some ways to make it a little bit better. Okay. Um, let me see if I need to. I'm going to press that on there. I'm going to show you how that works. Let me see if I can grab another square of cuddle. Hold on. I always have scraps laying around. That's why I have, <laughs> why I have them, right? So we're going to try to put this these trees onto this little hunk of white. Okay. So if I do that, it's big enough. Boop, boop. I have a little blip in my scissors. Okay. All right, so this is just plain cotton. We're just gonna do super plain and I'll show you some other things that um, would be some cuter ideas in a bit. Okay, so I always put the fusible on the back and it, one, it makes it more stable is what I like. So with the fabric, you can see it has some, some stiffness so it makes it, I don't know, easier for me to work with. When we put it together, we're totally gonna take the paper off and it doesn't make a big difference. Okay, other questions, are we doing all right? Did you just say plain cotton? I did, plain cuddle, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> check it. Yeah, no, check me because, yeah, sometimes I'm not right. Um, yeah, so this is, this is just cuddle. Okay, so the way that we normally do applique is we would take it and we would just press it from the front, okay? What I have found is um, that it doesn't adhere it well, even if I do it from the back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it that way and show you 
and then I'll show you the way that I tend to do it. Okay, so I used to always do it this way. So you can see all of the glue that's stuck to the back there, all the glue that's all over my fingernails. Um, so this is the glue that's all stuck on here. Okay, and that's what we want. That's what we want it to look like. If you have not let it dry completely, it'll start to like web between these two. Um, and then you need to put it back together, press it and let it cool completely. Okay, so if you notice that it's sticking at all, the trick is just to iron it again and let it cool back. Okay, okay, so my nap is running that direction. Okay, so my nap is running top to bottom here, top to bottom on my tree, and I'm gonna stick it on here. Okay, the thing that I have found, we're just gonna, we're gonna separate these. So I'll be one tree, two tree. Okay, so my nap going the same direction. I want that because it works together easily, and then when it's a finished product, I want it to actually like, you know, be smooth. Okay, so I can do it this way. Okay, and I would stick this over here, and I'm gonna do it for just a second. We're gonna see if it makes a mark. <laughs> My little pressing cloth. Thanks, Hawk. Thanks for helping me find that. Okay, and I was like, oh yeah, cotton. <laughs> that's, that's the cotton I have. And actually, I just used a piece of plain cotton downstairs on my, when I'm doing a pressing cloth. Okay, so you can see it kind of did a little weird thing, but not too bad, but it doesn't stick very well. Okay, so that's the thing that frustrates me. So then, like, I've done it like this. I can press it here and hold it. And I don't want to hold it for too long because I get wary of it doing weird things. <laughs> Mostly because I've had that happen and then I'm like, oh, I must have held it too long. Okay. Okay, we'll let that sit there for a second and see if it'll kind of stick a little bit better and then I'll show you the way that I do it now. Okay, because this has been my problem is that I have it do this and then let's see, it sticks a little bit but really not very well at all. Okay, so that's the thing that frustrates me is that it doesn't, doesn't stick like I want it to. So then when I move it, this can come up and especially if I'm doing something like the little airplane that has a bunch of little pieces that have to get aligned really nicely, if they're not stuck in the right place, they're gonna move when I go to sew it and it's not in the right place and then it's really not in the right place and I've sewed it into the wrong place, which is frustrating for me. So I don't wanna do that. So what I tend to do, and <laughs> also another, I didn't bring the paper. Okay. <laughs> it's been a crazy week, you guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a piece of this. All right, so then what I'm gonna do instead, just peels right off. See that, just totally came right off. Um, so not incredibly helpful, because once I got over to the machine, I still have to try to pin it in place, which I don't wanna do. Okay, so instead what I do, and I always do the, um, the Apple web because it just gives it some stability. Even like this, this is stiffer than this. Okay, so this will stay in position where I want it to be. It stays its shape better than this will because this has a lot more, I don't know, fluidity. <laughs> Not sure of the right word. Okay, so I like the body that it gives it. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the back of this. And I'm gonna bring it right over here and pop it down. Okay, the great thing and then we do a little pat like I always do. Um, the great thing about this is that I can actually take it up. So if it's in the wrong spot, I can pull it up, but it actually is still sticking. You can see like it, it's stuck, okay? But I can put it back down in the right place. So if I have to fix something, I can easily do that. This got pulled a little bit, there we go, perfect, okay? So that's how that'll work and then I can just sew that and I'll show you that in a sec. We'll sew. We'll do the little crisp, the other Christmas tree too. Okay, so let me see, my nap goes that direction, my tree. So I'm gonna do this a little bit funky because I wanna show you how we can make that little pole work. Okay, are we having any questions? Everybody's okay? No, okay. Okay. All right, if you have any questions, please ask and I'm happy because yeah, there's always things that I forget to say. Okay, so I'm gonna do my funky little Christmas tree in this direction. Because how many weeks do we have till Christmas? Not enough. I don't know what it is, but I know it's, it's shorter than I want it to be. Somebody posted it the other day and I was like, how dare you? Don't tell me. Okay, so here's my little trunk. They're all cut at weird angles because that's what I wanted to do. Okay, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of that. My nap goes this direction, yep, okay. Okay. 
So now what I can do is I can figure out where I want my trunk to be. So you want to use the fusible to give it body as it's going through the machine. Right, or to, to be my tracing place. So that's what I trace right. onto, and then it's what gives it body when it puts it through the machine, and also just when I'm working with it, that added layer of the fusible web actually adds some stability to it. I don't use it for the fusing. You can, you just have to press a lot longer, and then you run the risk of messing with the fabric. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my tree up. I tacked my, my trunk in place, okay, so I patted it. My trunk is in place. I pulled the Christmas tree up and put it back over the top. Okay, so that's where that fusible, like being able to the or the uh, 505 spray, where it is sort of like malleable, where I could pull it up, put it back down. I could fix it. I could do whatever I want. Okay, so I could totally do that. And if I decided I wanted to put, you know, a star or something, I could totally mess with that too. Okay, um, so that's why I like to use that. Okay, so now I've got the two of them. So basically the way that the, um, the applique part of this will work is the same for either one of them. So I'm only going to do one. Um, which one do you think I should do? Oh, I, I, think, I think the really fancy highfalutin pop art one over there. Is that this? Yeah, that one. <laughs> it's not kindergarten art because that's kind of what I was thinking. Nope. Andy Warhol would be proud. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. So let me find what we want to use is a, um, a stabilizer on the back. So you can use all sorts of things. So let me talk about this for just a second here. We'll talk about stitches and about using a stabilizer. So what I found, because I did a few things where I did the applique on them, I tried them out, and I didn't put anything behind it because the, you know, it's stable enough, I can sew on it. Well, what I found is that it will actually sort of... Um, shift a little bit and it will stretch. So if you see, so let's concentrate on the bottom half of this. There is nothing on that and you can see that it doesn't lay super straight and that it's stretched in some places. Can you see that on the camera okay? Let me turn it around and I'll show you because you can see it on the back pretty well how it's kind of stretched in places. And I was trying really hard not to stretch it because I knew that was a possibility. Okay, so what happens is as it's feeding through the machine, it's naturally gonna kind of stretch. So like for this, as I'm leading it through, yeah, you can see like how it has this little, it doesn't want to lay straight right oh, there. the background puckers. The background. Got it. Yeah, that's what, that's what ends up happening. So you can see that that doesn't happen up here. It doesn't happen on this one at all, okay? So this one, I can lay it out flat, totally fine. This one, you can see like that pucker is just kind of there, okay? So if I lay this out flat, it doesn't really, I have to kind of, I have to really manipulate it and I still can't really get it to lay flat, okay? And that's because it's stretched while it's sewn. And this is the one that has nothing behind it, okay? So what I was trying to figure out is what I needed to put behind it to make it actually stay nice and flat. Um, we talked in the embroidery one, um, uh, we talked about the embroidery a few weeks ago and we were talking about having it pucker a little bit and sometimes that happens and how we can uh, prevent that. We'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, but that's something that happens with regularly, regular um, applique as well. Okay, so what I found is that when I sprayed it down and I tried to sew around it, it still wanted to stretch. So this side I did with um, batting. So this one I did batting on it and it is nice and stable. You can see it. Okay, this one I did with a uh, tear away on the back and it's totally fine too. Okay, so a stabilizer on the back is really important. That's what we're going to use today. I have a few different stabilizers um, that Floriani has sent me to work with. So this is the perfect stick which has a little bit of stick to it. We have tear away, we have cut away, and there's fusible. Um, so all of those are applicable, whichever which one you want to use. So um, the batting is one that I use. So this is another version of that elephant. Okay, this one I did it with batting behind it because it's the front of a pillow. So this added a little bit of oomph to the fabric in general so I could stuff it and it wouldn't get lumpy at all. And so the whole thing is done with the batting behind it, okay? Super cute. You can see my stitches got wonk a do right there. I don't even know what happened. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably like my needle was like, we're done. 
we're really done and you need to replace us. <laughs> like That's what that looks like is when your needle is wrong. Um, that's what happens if you're using a uh, universal needle too instead of a stretch. Like we talk about that a lot about using a stretch needle. That's the sort of thing that will happen if you're using a universal which might have happened um, if I was like between projects. Um, this is the cute little elephant, which we did with a little flappy ear on him. So on the batting, I use that sometimes depending on how much stability I want to lend to the fabric. So if I want to say um, make, like I did a quilt that did like a Hawaiian quilt sort of design on it. And I use that, but I wouldn't want to put batting right behind that because I, do, I want to add like that later. We're gonna do like a quilt as you go sort of thing with it is what I did. So I didn't want the extra layer behind it. I just wanted something I could tear away. So that's what I used. In this one, this is a tear away as well. That's what we're gonna use today. I think it's a tear away. Okay, I don't need that big of a hunk. We'll get a little bit. Okay, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see what time, what, how much time we have. Okay. So also, if you want to come and look at these, you can see a difference. I did these on two different machines because you guys know I have a baby lock and a Bernina. And, um, and so I used the two different machines with it. And I should have written on the back, but I'm pretty darn sure that I did the green with the baby lock and the red with the Bernina. And... Um, the same stitch length. So that's what's kind of fascinating to me. So if you come in here, this was the two different machines, the exact same stitch length. So these were the same stitch settings here and here. And you can see that they turn out very different. So I can tell you what stitch setting to use, but you should probably try it out on your own machine just to see how it works because it does turn out very different depending on the machine. Okay. So it isn't universal, unfortunately, but I thought it was um, a good example of just how different that they can work. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty darn sure that the green was the, the baby lock. Okay, um, I think that's it for there. All right, so now I've got my stabilizer and I'm gonna put that on the back of my pop art, right? Okay. <laughs> Glad that you- just, just so we're cute, clear, Accu, Accu quilt stepped in and they, they actually bought it for the other one. They did. Oh, I <laughs> Maybe I'll do both. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put fusible on the back of this to make this stay together. Okay. And when I say fusible, I mean basting spray. Okay. So now we've got that one. Okay. And we'll do that. And maybe, let me just put it on there. We'll see if we have time. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this because I want, especially with this one, because this one is straight lines, right? I can burp, burp, burp. It's really no big deal. This one, because it has the curves on it, I'm going to have to be doing a lot more of this, which pulls the fabric and stretches it. So that stabilizer is going to be even more important for this one. Okay. And um, like we've talked about before, this is the 505 spray. It's my favorite. This is the old bottle. Sorry. This is the new can. This is what they look like now. Okay, super good. Can you see it okay in there? Mm -hmm. It's not too much nope. reflection. Um, so this stuff is great. I love it and I use it for all sorts of things, obviously. Um, I couldn't do this without it. You would try to pin it and it just doesn't work as nicely. Um, but like we've talked about before, it will just wash out. Okay, so when you're done with it and you tear this off the back and the back is kind of sticky, once you wash this, it's gonna all go away and the stickiness won't be there anymore. Okay, all right. Okay, are you ready to come around and let's sew a little bit? We'll see how this works. Okay, so let's futz around. Because um, a lot of times you guys know I do, um, so that's an applique stitch, um, that I do zigzags when I'm trying to put things down. And we do that a lot. Let me see. So there was one, sorry, I'm going to show you guys something really fast. So you know, like a lot of times we just use the zigzag. But like we talked about in this one, this was the... Um, Quilt Cadets, little bag, Pop-Tart bag, okay? I also did it with the blanket stitch, which I actually like a lot better when I'm doing applique. So when I'm doing my bindings or um, anything like that, I use a zigzag because I wanna fluff the stitches up. Usually when I'm doing applique, I'm doing it with a C3, which is the flat cuddle. And I think that the blanket stitch looks a lot better. 
So I think it looks nicer. So what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to take a little scrap of fabric and we're going to try out a few different uh, lengths and see how it works. What have I got in there? Blue? That should work okay. Okay, so I've got it. This is my generic setting, okay? When it pops up there, this is what they have is a four length and a two, or I mean a four width and two length, okay? So we're just going to stitch that. We'll see what happens, okay? We'll see how that looks. It's stuck already. What happened? Oh no. It's like really stuck. Okay, we're gonna rethread, guys. Hold on. I don't know what happened. Oh, ha, that's what happened. <laughs> it sews a lot better when there's actually a bobbin in there. Isn't that weird? so crazy. <laughs> that guy who invented sewing, he knew what he was doing. Sewing machines. Cool. Okay. See, aren't we glad we practiced first? Because, poof, what if that had been on my final and I'd been so upset? All right. <laughs> so that's what will happen when you try to sew without a bobbin. Okay. So let's not do that. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty good. I haven't done that in a while. Okay, I just want to cut some of that off so it'll not get sucked down anywhere. All right, now let's see. It's like my machine normally sews so much better than this. Still sounds like it's doing something funky. Might have to retry. Oh, you guys, I just sewed with this yesterday. Okay, we're gonna rethread the whole baby. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out and watch how I rethread this guy. <laughs> okay, because honestly, one of the things that will fix most problems is rethreading your machine. Um, if you've ever, <laughs> if you've been sewing very long, you have learned that, is that a rethread will solve most problems. Um, not all. Oh, you know what? That might be. Here we go. We're going to like take my machine apart. I want to make sure that the bobbin case is sitting in there right, because I feel like the bobbin case is sitting in there wrong. Yep, and that's what's happened, okay? So my little, um, let's see if I can find something to point with. Where's my stiletto? Okay, so right here, you can see it around this side, Hawk. Do you see the little white arrow that's right here? This little white arrow should be oh, over here. I can't see that yet. Okay. There we go. This little white arrow should be over here. So, so I was like, that sounds funky, and it's because this is in the wrong position, okay? So I cleaned my machine after that last big to-do. And it looks like I messed it up. Sorry, guys. All right, questions. Throw me questions. Because <laughs> i got to take the whole thing apart. Okay, we got to take this off. So I can get my bobbin case in the right position. Because what I did is I was working on that big quilt this weekend. And then I finished and I cleaned out my whole case. Which I have to say, I was very pleased at how minimal the mess was. Sorry, stuck my fingers, my hand right in the middle. Okay. So now I can take this whole guy apart. Okay. So you can see I did clean it the other day. So now there's that, you see that little, the little arrow? It's supposed to point to that little dot. Okay. So this little arrow and this little dot are supposed to be together. That's information that will vary obviously by machine, but your, um, your owner's manual will tell you that. So honestly, sometimes it's just these little things. It's like, oh, that's slightly off. It's not in the right position. Then it will totally mess up everything. Okay, get that screw in there. My little, I wish I could tell you guys where to get this little screwdriver. A bunch of people have commented on it. So if there's any shops that are watching that have these guys, it's the best little thing. Because it'll get in tiny places. If I could grab a hold of it better. There we go. Oh. I'm trying to do this with my left hand. I can't do it. Sorry, I have to get my right hand in there. Right. Maybe. Okay, there we go. All right, so then put this back on there. 
Rin is throwing out some great tips. Oh, good. Rin does a bunch of, she does these little pillows. Um, and so she does a lot of applique. Um, I totally trust her word on that one. She's talking about um, some water, using water soluble at times. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to do that. Yep. Mm hmm. And I will show you the difference. That's what I was going to do with the two different ones. I knew there was a purpose. Thanks, Rin. Thanks. Okay. All right, let's try it again. I want to get the stitch the right size before. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it wasn't my top thread that was messed up that time. Pretty sure that was just my bobbin case. Oh, oh it's it sounds squeaking. so much better. Even I could hear the squeaking. Oh, okay. So you can see that this is a, get that thread out of the way. That's a pretty big, like the length is really long. Okay, so it's only two is what it says, but I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Let's try 1.6, and we're going to go this direction. Here we go. Okay. So that's a little bit shorter. I like that better. Okay, so really, you're just going to play around with it. We're going to shorten it up just a little bit more. Just one more time, I'll take it down to a 1. Point, well, 1.2, because I went from... 2 to 1.6 to 1.2. So we'll see what that does. So that makes it shorter in between. Okay, I like the, the width of the stitch, the button, or the blanket stitch. Okay, so this one is a little bit shorter and it starts to get funky in the nap. So what we were talking about is using the um, water soluble stabilizer. So that's what this is. So this is the stuff from Floriani. We also have some from Solvi, uh, or Sulky. That's, yeah, the solvy kind, um, that is a water soluble. Okay. So let me show you. I'm going to show you two things here. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do just a little bit of length of that in the, um, or, you know, like a little bit of stitching in it in the length that I like, which was 1.6. Okay. So I'm going to do that again. Okay. I'm going to cut it. And then... So now you can see what that looks like, okay? And now we're gonna do it with the water-soluble stabilizer. Yeah, so I wanna put the like kind of grippy side down. It has a little, little bit of a feel to it. This side is smooth and this side has a little, grippy isn't maybe the right word, but it has a little texture to it. And that's the side we're gonna put down against the fabric. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut that. And we'll pull that out. Okay, so you can see I can see my stitches really well. What I like when I use the water soluble stabilizer is I can see the edge really nicely and make sure I'm on it. Um, and I like that I can see that when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm just gonna tear that up. Okay, so this is when you can use your little stiletto to sort of pull this stuff up and out. Okay, pulled out. Now, if you look at the difference, see if we can, can you see it in that pretty good light right there? Okay, so you can see my stitches here are much clearer than my stitches here. Okay, this it sinks in really a lot. You can see it kind of like, I don't know, it just sinks in. This one, it makes it sit up on top a little bit better. I'll show you the difference when we're actually made, or when we're doing the um, block, you'll be able to see the difference a little bit more. Okay. So let's give this a try. Okay. And we'll talk about the difference of doing this with the embroidery in just a minute too. Okay. Okay. Let's give it a try. Let's see if this works. Okay. And I'm just going to hold this down with my hand. Oop. That's not the right one. Dang it. I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> okay. Whoops. I didn't look where my needle was. So my needle, when it's coming down here on the right side, should be right along the edge of my fabric. Ta-da, just like that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is actually a place too, or if I use this guy. If I can make that come out. Come on, little guy. If I use my open toe, you'll be able to see better. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so now I want it to go right back in that same place again. Look at I didn't get my water soluble over far enough. Oops. Okay, so we're just going to stitch all along here. And I'm just kind of holding that in place. Trying to see where my next step goes. Yep, there we go. Okay. I'm just going to kind of manipulate it around this corner. And I'm just going to move the fabric, or the, yeah, the fabric, um, the piece here. I'm going to move it where I want it to. So I don't actually want it to make a big wide stitch yet. I'm just going to make it stitch there. And then I'm move this again. Okay, so those corners, they can get a little bit funky because they'll want to do other things than what I want them to do. So I just force it to do what I want. Okay, so just stitch along here. We'll do the same thing at this corner. So you're pulling to the side of the, of the sewing machine and not um, along the line of the travel of the fabric. And that helps with the stitch. Right. Well, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the edge of my fabric, so where my needle is on this left side, I want it to always come down there. So I just sort of get it in a position and kind of watch it. So I can do it fairly fast, but honestly, like, the slower you go, the better it'll be. Because you can actually, like, if I'm doing it really slow, and this is when that, this, the little lever, so if you have a machine that you can slow it down, you can get it so that it'll just kind of chug along here. and I can see where it's gonna go a little bit better. So if you're having a hard time keeping it in the right place, absolutely just slow it. Oops, I meant it to lock that. <laughs> I cut it, oopsie. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back down here and I'm gonna do this bottom bit right around the trunk, okay? So I'm gonna lock my stitch and then I'm gonna come around. Oh, got it. Uh, Rin was saying that the pulling was when um, you when you pull the water soluble away from the oh. stitch, you pull it sideways as opposed to um, up and down. Up and down. Right. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I never. Thanks, I have thanks, not. Rin. Yeah, I have not been able to get it to actually pull out all the time ever. So I'm sure I just need more practice. And you can see I totally manipulate the fabric and I just make it go where I want it to go. I stop it when I want it to stop. And don't be afraid to use your little hand crank to make it do exactly what you want. Okay, now I'm going to do a lock stitch there because that's what I wanted to do last time. And then I'll pull that out. Okay, all right. So now we got that down. Look, it's totally pop art. <laughs> okay, so we're going to leave that there and I'm going to do the other one. So this one, this one with the, uh, the AccuQuilt die. So this one, I'm going to do it in a smaller stitch because if I look at this, these big wide bits here, trying to get around those little corners is going to be hard. Okay. I won't actually enjoy that at all. Um, <laughs> like, and I want my sewing to be somewhat fun. I don't actually want it to be, to make me grumpy. So I'm going to shorten that back to where we were for the other one to 1.2. We'll see how well that works. All right. So now technically, like if you were doing this and you wanted your stitches to hide, um, there we go. I feel like it got longer and not shorter. Oh, that's it. Okay, we're gonna do that one. That's 0.8, it says. Now, what was I talking about? <laughs> so to remind me, I was saying something that I thought was important. I did. I don't remember either. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know, it's thread color. Cause I'm using navy on this and I don't really care cause it's gonna kind of blend in a little bit. I also want you guys to be able to see the stitches. So if I were doing this on something where I didn't want the stitches to show, I would definitely be changing it so that it was, you know, like a green. Okay, so you can see I kind of made it turn just a little bit there. Now I know that it's gonna do a sideways. Okay, so I just move the fabric. 
So this is when you just want to take it nice and slow because you want that needle to come down on the side of your fabric. Okay, so I'm going to pivot again so I can get it to, to feed in a little bit straighter. Okay, so I can keep going around this. I'm going to go around one more little thing. And there, it did a funky thing, and I'm just going to be like, oh well, it did a funky thing. Okay, and this is how I really like control the fabric, is really just by that hand crank on the side. Um, make sure that you're, you know, just kind of doing it, making it go where I want it to go. I have a lot more control over it that way. I can make it be pretty darn precise. Okay. All right, so now I'm just gonna switch it over to, um, sorry about that. I'm gonna switch it over to just a zigzag. Okay, I'm gonna show you how that works. So the zigzag, I wanna do a little zigzag. I'm gonna do it a little extra wider. And I'm gonna do a 1.4. And a 2.0, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do, oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm just gonna move my fabric so that my needle is coming down just off the fabric. Okay, I'm gonna take this corner nice and slow because the corner is funky. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you an easier way of doing this if you have an embroidery machine. <laughs> Okay, so now we'll take that out, just so you can you guys can see. So with the zigzag and with the blanket stitch, okay? All right, so let's tear those off, just so we can, come on. What did she say, T tear sideways? And I'm like, here, let me tear up. Mm -hmm. right. Sorry, sorry, Rin, let me do it right. It's because I want to tear it all up at one time and it doesn't work that way. So I get like, let's see, it's out of those blanket stitches. Come on, baby. Back on the sewing machine, when uh -huh. you do the turn, is yeah. it better to have the needle in the applique or uh, at, at the edge? Or in inside of the inside of the applique or in, at the edge? At the edge. Yeah, because that's really what I'm trying to keep in the right position is that edge. So that's where I try to I try to keep it down. Sometimes it ends up that I'm, you know, inside the fabric and I'm turning it, but I'm always watching where the outside needle comes down. Because if it's too far away, it does start to look weird. And I definitely have a few samples I can show you of that. Um, the other thing is that if you are using a coordinating thread, so like if I were using a... Um, a forest green on this and I got too far over here you would just absolutely see it in there so if you you're closer to this or kind of on it you have um, it looks better in the end does that make sense mm -hmm. so you can hide it in the fabric because you're that's the thing it's like your thread is going to show over there because you can see here I got the tiniest bit off so I can see my navy in the white there okay so you'll get all of that off and that makes the stitches the um, fusible makes it actually like, not fusible, the topping makes the stitches sit up a little bit and look really nice. Okay. Makes it a very clear blanket stitch. Okay, let's try this one. See how this one works? If it's still cute. <laughs> I really like that you think it's pop art. I'm like, this is, you know, just how I drew with my kids when they were little. Here, honey, draw a tree. <laughs> and then I have a daughter who's an artist, so oh, maybe somehow it worked. Okay. Pull this all out. And like I said, uh, we talked about this before. This is the water soluble, but we don't actually use water with it. Okay, so you always pull that it out. That question just came up. You're a mind reader. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's water soluble. And I asked, um, I think it was Sheila when we were talking about it, and I was like, well, it says it's water soluble. Why don't I want to use it with water? And what it does is turns really gummy in your stuff, and that's not fun. So you don't want gummy bits of yuck in your fabric. 
because then I think you'd actually have to wash it to get all of those bits out. You can't just spray it and it'll go away, which is what I want to think it'll do, is that if I just, you know, spray a little, all of it just magically disappears, but it can't disappear, just kind of gets goopy. Okay, so there you go. Ta-da! My little pop art version. I didn't do very well right there at the end. You can see, I probably should go slower. Okay, <laughs> but I'm trying not to take all day for you guys. Okay, so I had other things. What did I do? <laughs> what did I do with them? Um, oh, there they are. Okay, so we were talking about, um, so like with the AccuQuilt one, right, and trying to go around all of those curves, um, not the easiest thing. So if you're doing that on cotton, you could do it with a t uh, just a straight, you could do it with a straight stitch on the cuddle too. I just don't like the way that looks at all. Um, it's personal. But what I do know is that you can actually do it with, they have embroidery files. So with AccuQuilt, with a bunch of their um, dies, they actually have embroidery files that you can download and then use in your embroidery machine to go around the edges. And it will do a blanket stitch and it will do a satin stitch. And I think there was one other stitch that it would do um, that will actually do it in the design that you did. So I, of course, started with the hardest one I could find um, because that's the way I like to roll. And so I did the snowflake, which is on that same die that I had. And it has the tree and the snowflake and the holly. So I started with the um, snowflake. So we can come on over and come look at this. And I'll explain what worked and why I still need more practice, which is not a shock. Um, so the way that this worked is it's going to put a placement line on here and then you put your snowflake on and then it stitches around it. So I did a the satin stitch. Oh, there was like a um, kind of like a feathery stitch. I don't know what it's called. Um, that was the other one and it didn't work as well with the cuddle. So I was like, mm, not doing that. So I did the satin stitch here instead. This was my first try. Okay. And you all know if you're, if you've watched this more than a couple of weeks, you know, I'm pretty new to embroidery. So I'm still figuring a lot of this out. And, um, so anyway, this was my first, my first try here and it worked pretty well, but I had a couple of moments here where it was really off. And um, once it's there, like, I was kind of like, oh, well, okay, that didn't work. Um, oh, see, there's another. So there, it didn't catch at all is what happened, okay? And this is from my bad placement, okay? This is, this is not reflective of their design software, okay? This was me not getting it in the right place, all right? But you can see how that worked. So I did okay in some places. So I tried it again. And I'll tell you, I used the... Um, the, uh, I think this is the cutaway on the back, and then I used the stabilizer. Uh, this is what I did is I put um, spray on the back of this, so I've hooped the stabilizer, and then I put 505 spray on the back of this, stuck this down, did the placement line, and then placed my snowflake. This one I did a much better job, but still not completely right. Um, but what I found was this one I actually put, you'll see under here, there's another layer of the water soluble because I did that for my placement line and that made it at least a little bit easier to see. Um, the thing that I didn't do right on this that I'll tell you to make sure that you do is make sure that you have fused all or you have gotten the spray on all of the bits. So when I did it, I was kind of trying to do, be fast and um, I'll do better and show you next week, okay? Um, but I didn't get the fusible spray on all of the little bits. So there was parts that didn't get fused. And that's what happened is that then they moved. So these, you can see this, I did really well, got it right in the right place. And it totally, it's beautiful. And honestly, like I'm totally gonna try this with the tree too. Cause I don't know why I tried with the snowflake first. One, because I've avoided the snowflake dye because I'm like, it's so cute, but I do not want to stitch around all of that. <laughs> that's a pain, okay? But look at how perfect that is. It's so good. It's so pretty. So doing something like this, you could absolutely add some fun bits to something um, by doing the little applique and using their software or their downloads. So that was great. And I remember talking with them, the folks at AccuQuilt about it once and I was like, that seems like a lot of extra work. And then I realized it actually made it so much better. <laughs> so much better, okay? So try out their, try out the embroidery files. Some of them are, um, purchasable, so some of them cost and some of them are free. It depends on what they are and how they're used, I'm assuming. So, um, and if they paid someone else to design it. Okay, we'll get out some of it just so you guys can see 
how nice it turned out when it turned out right. Okay, like this is super pretty. I really love it. I think it's awesome. And um, yeah, it feels great. So what I was thinking I want to do is, um, and I'm going to try this. So I'm going to use some more of those and put it with this. Oops. This is one of our new fabrics for Christmas time. Look at how cute that would be. Like it would be so good together. So it just gives you kind of an opportunity with the dyes especially is to be more creative. Um, but you can see what a, what a better job I did on the second one when I use the fusible or the water soluble stabilizer first. Okay, I got it much more on the line on the second one. This first one, I missed a lot of it. Um, but at this point, I could do it. I could do it in. So I could do that in a bigger chunk. What I would probably do, because there is some futzing with it, is I would do it on small chunks like this and then sew them together and create, um, like, the corner stones for a quilt block or something with this. It would be super cute. Um, yeah, all sorts of things that you could do with it. But be creative. Have fun with it. And use those files because it did make the... Um, sort of like a mix of the embroidery and the um, applique super good okay i really like it. are the questions about that everybody's okay okay all right so now i can unhook that i i would oh, it looks like it might be a, a tear away i don't have them labeled downstairs and i really should okay so then this can all come out okay and if we wanted to we could tear all of this stuff out too all right and then your fabric is back to beautiful all right the snowflakes are super cute i am really like i'm kind of excited to try more of that because it did work i just needed a little more help okay all right so with this is the same way i'm going to pull the back of it off and then i can use it for whatever i want to okay so whatever project i want to use you can absolutely do it on a bigger piece and then trim it down whatever you want to do it will work, okay? So we're just gonna tear some of this off so I can show you what the end looks like. Because really what we're doing is we're kind of adding, we're trying to add stability as we go by using the fusible, um, like the double-sided fusible, and um, and then the tear away, and also the water-soluble stabilizer for the top. It's causing all this stability, but then what we can do is we can take it all apart and we end up having the same soft fabric that we started with, which is what we all love, is this the softness of it, okay? So I'm gonna pull some of this out. I'm gonna do this carefully because I don't want to tear any stitches. Especially here in front of all y'all when you had to see all the mistakes I already made. Sheesh. Okay, so you can see this is the part where I tore it out. It's all nice and soft again. Okay, tear it out a little bit more. See, now I'm going fast. I'm gonna rip stitches and I'll be like, dang it, I did it again. I said I wasn't going to. <laughs> I promise I take more time when I'm, you know, doing projects for reals. Okay. All right. There we go. So now it's nice and soft again. Okay. Totally different feeling than this, which is still nice and stiff because it has all the stabilizers in it. Okay. So this will take you back to being like normal. All right. And then you can do whatever you want with that. All right. Super easy. I love the applique because there's actually like just a billion things basically you could do with it. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you before we um, finish up is machine embroidery with cuddle when doing something else. So we did, um, we, I've been taking part of the Love Notes quilt. Um, oh gosh, what is it called? Um, <laughs> it's like a mystery quilt thing with Kimberbell. And so I've been participating in that and I've been doing it on cotton and then a little bit on cuddle and I've been trying to learn, I've been using it to learn a lot is what I've been doing. And I really love it. So this is not perfect because... I'm not, I'm still learning right along with you guys, okay? This is one of their blocks um, from this past week, I think. So I needed to do a little bit of a better trimming, but you can see this is super cute. So this is the cuddle fabric, okay? This is the cuddle fabric, and then I mixed it with the cotton here, okay? Super duper cute, I absolutely love it. Um, it's super fun, and the cuddle adds this level of texture to it, that you just wouldn't, you couldn't get it with cotton. And it was absolutely no harder to do. The only thing that I needed to do was trim it better, which I'm still learning how to do, okay? So I'm getting better. Um, but using the water soluble stabilizer, using the stabilizer behind, all of that is kind of applicable whether we're using embroidery or we're doing applique. Um, oh, and I was gonna say, so I got the, um, the embellishment kits, and this is just like my personal recommendation to you is that when you are, 
trying something like this is to get the kit for it because they'll give you all of the bits and then you'll realize things in there that were really important um, or that you really liked or you didn't like. The kit has come in really handy for me and I've learned a lot from doing it. Okay, is that all of it? I showed all of the samples, I think. Do we have? We, you wanted to talk again about the, uh, the new quilt. The, yeah, the quilt that I just did, so let me grab it. Hold on. Um, I so wanna, I want to go back and read a comment here from Mary. The water-soluble stabilizer or topper, when you tear it away, you can store it in a Ziploc baggie, and you can mix it with water later and use it for starch. <laughs> talk about frugal. Where is the emoticon for, like, mind blown? <laughs> That's fascinating. I know that you're supposed to keep this in, a, um, in uh, an airtight container, too, so I'll put this, like, in a little um, gallon bag later. The other one, the one I have from Sulky, comes in a little plastic box that keeps it there, but I guess it'll start to, like, do funky things if there's moisture in the air. We don't want that to happen, so I'm going to put it in a water watertight container, which will be a Ziploc bag. All right, so this is actually, it kind of segues because this, we were talking about it, that this would be a fun project to do applique on the bottom side of these. So you could do like a little matchy matchy game. You could like pick which one had what where. Um, super fun. I will, I will, I will. I just wanted to say on the back of these, it would be really fun to do a little applique first and then have it so that they flip down and you can't see it. Super fun. Little embroidery, whatever you wanted to do. Okay, so this is um, a quilt that I did for an upcoming uh, industry event, okay? Uh, it's the Hydra quilt. It's from Slice of Pie Quilts, her pattern. It was written for cotton, okay? Let's see if we can get it to the Malta shake down. Can you see it? Yep. Is it great? <laughs> I really love it. It's super fun. Okay, so this is the Hydra quilt from um, Slice of Pie Quilts, and um, the way that it's put together is very, very. Sim oh, let me show you the back of it because it's very similar to our strip quilts. So basically, you're gonna you stitch a row down, and then you stitch down all of those little scales, and then you stitch another row of fabric. Um, I would probably do the. Um, Maybe the backs of these, but I'd probably do those little strips in cotton maybe next time. Um, maybe. I don't know. It's also soft this way. But you can see the back. It's done um, quilt as you go. So there are stitching lines in there, but you can't really see them. And I will tell you, they were not the straightest stitching lines I've ever done. Um, but they turned out beautiful. It turned out beautiful, and you can't really see, right? You can't really see the stitching lines. I, I, I got real close. Yeah, so okay. You, so you put, and then when you get okay. back here, you can't see them at all. Right, so if you got real close, you saw it. like my lines were not straight, like not by, yeah, miles. They were not straight. Um, Cause it was a lot of layers I was sewing through. I mean, there were, there were times where if you have the seam allowance in there, it's one, two, three, four, five, six layers of cuddle plus batting. It was a lot. Um, my little crescendo did it, but it turned out great. I'm super happy with it. This is the uh, Demi Rose fabric, which is just a lovely, like that rose, print in it is wonderful. I absolutely love it. Um, and then I bound it with a C3. Okay, but this is one that you could actually, and you could do that on here. You could put a name across the top if you like embroider their name or applicate their name across the scales. Like you could do all sorts of fun things. So I want you guys to really think about the applique and how you can use it in lots of different ways and get creative with it. Um, I love seeing what you guys do. So if you are not a part of our I Love Cuddle group yet, please join us there. It's a Facebook group that we all get to talk about all the things we're making, which is super fun. And I love it because I get to see what you're doing and kind of be inspired by that as well. And if you're, there are things that you want to learn about, um, you can always post them there as well. So um, that's this quilt. So this is, like I said, it's the Hydra quilt pattern. It's technically it's written for cotton. Um, the only thing I did differently was I made the pattern for each of these. I made them the size of, this is the sewing line, not the cut line. Do you know what happened to that purple square that you asked me if I needed it? Yes. <laughs> I said I didn't. And now I'm like, oh, so oh actually, I go. could use that. Yeah, um, okay, so this is what I did is that I, and this is the same thing we've talked about before, is that I drew the cut in, or I drew the sewing line, I sewed that whole thing, and then I trimmed it. Okay, so this is one of those examples where sewing on the curves, if you have the square piece, you sew the curve, it's a lot easier. 
than trying to sew it. So this is that same type of thing like we were talking about is adding stability to it. So adding something that lets you do that curve a little bit better. The same with the applique and the way that I put like a stabilizer on the back or batting on the back, it lets you turn it without stretching the fabric and having it kind of freak out on you. Okay. And Holly, it totally feels like a weighted blanket. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's it weighs about I, five pounds. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great. I really love it. So anyway, super fun. And it's like, you know, kind of wiggly. And somebody was saying that, um, oh, I think it was Leanne had said there's a, there's a book about a fish and he kind of looks like this. It'd be a great gift to do this and give them the book too. So, um, God, I can't remember the name of the book. Sorry. I don't have any grands and my kids are grown. So I don't, I don't keep up, but look at that. It's so amazing. You guys, that's what I worked on this weekend. So <laughs> this has been a crazy one. Um, okay, I think that's it. We have a winner. Winner is Tammy L.H. of Chicago, Illinois. Um, thank you so much for watching, for sharing. We will be back next week. So next week we are back. We're doing the infinity scarf. So just the, um, the regular old Lux Cuddle Infinity Scarf. It's a super easy one. You may have done it already. If you have, I still ask you to come back. I'm going to show you some variations on it. If you're new to sewing with Cuddle and you're like, this stuff sounds interesting, but I'm a little scared, this is a great project. So if you know anybody, too, that wants to start with an easy project, the Infinity Scarf is great. It's two whole seams. A little bit of hand sewing if you want to do it and it's a wonderful way to get used to working with the fabric and as the holidays start to approach us this is a great one to make for gifts so if you want to do that with us you'll need to get a yard of fabric before next week i'll show you how to cut it and sew it it's super duper easy so super wonderful um also oh rainbow fish ellen texted me rainbow fish is the uh -huh. name of that book okay so you can do that super cute i used i think 12 different colors for that so and it was a half a yard of each just so you know. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. Like I said, it's a huge prize package for National Sewing Month, which is very exciting. You can join us next week here. Also, every week um, on Wednesdays, we'll be over at the fabric.com site this month. I'll be teaching some stuff over there. So that'll be fun. Um, I think that's it. So thanks so much for joining us for Sew Together Tuesday. I hope to see you next week. Um, for this, I also hope to see you on that I Love Cuddle group and see all the fun stuff that you're making. So thanks for joining us. Have lots of fun with the applique and the embroidery. And until next week, happy sewing.